tastes like the most expensive Italian signing ever. Yes, yes, let's round up the week of the Tonali announcements by drinking some fine Italian beer on this Friday afternoon. Now, the club have still been uh, producing things today, you know, putting things out about Tonali's behind the scenes things from his first day at the club, you know, backstage with Trippier, and um, his, his first interview is now out on the Newcastle United YouTube channel, so go check that out. Obviously, it's all in Italian for now. Forza Tonali, what a flag that is by War Flags as well, by the way. He's getting photos taken in front of that, and uh, Tonali. You know, he's settling in, he's doing nice. So we'll see more of him. Who we're seeing next thing, because that's what this video is about. There's loads to get through actually in this video. We're going to talk about Newcastle's new income and signing, if you believe the Daily Telegraph. Just breaking news that on this Friday night, it's past 7 pm now. And of course, we're going to talk about the huge pre season tournament that is coming to St. James Park on the weekend of Saturday the 5th of August and Sunday the 6th of August. We talked about it a couple weeks ago, the Sellac Cup, and that is now officially announced by Newcastle and the tickets are available. I've got mine, £55 for the full weekend. More details on that to come. And uh, the last thing is also a little bit on the Amazon documentary. People are eagerly awaiting the Newcastle and Amazon documentary that will be coming out very soon. We're gonna talk about that as well at the end, but if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the Magpie Channel TV. Daily Newcastle and videos here. A lot of transfer rumor videos as well, keeping you guys in the loop of who's going to be wearing the black and white stripes next season and who might not be wearing them, who's out, you know what I mean, who's going. And uh, give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. So, let's get into it then. And the big news this afternoon is that Newcastle United are closing in on the signing of Leicester City's Harvey Barnes. Newcastle hope to agree a deal with Leicester for the England international winger next week. They are set to place a bid in the coming days and they are confident of it being accepted by the Foxes. The Magpies are putting in a bid of around 35 million. Leicester were trying to get close at the 45-50 million for Harvey Bonds, but they reckon a deal can be struck between the 35 to 40 million pound mark. Just reading a bit from the Telegraph article here, at 7 o'clock tonight, Barnes has been a target of West Ham United, who had been on the, at the front of the queue, and Aston Villa, but Newcastle have stolen a march on their rivals and are leading the race. Tottenham were also linked with them the other week as well, trying to get a double signing for Harvey Barnes and James Madison. But it is now expected that with initial talks being held with Barnes, the incoming bid is expected in the next few days, and Barnes is very keen on a move to Newcastle and to be a part of their Champions League side. Of course he is. Who isn't? Do you know what I mean? Who, who wouldn't want to be a part of this? Barnes from Madison. Money. London. Barnes has got a bit of knowledge about him, got a bit of common sense on Lake Madison, yeah? But obviously Newcastle are targeting Barnes way more than they did Madison. It's what Eddie Howe wants. He wants that hard-working winger. And Barnes fits the bill. The Telegraph basically just go on to say, you know, Barnes prefers a move to Newcastle. Newcastle are moving faster and smarter than the Premier League teams around us that want them, the likes of Villa and West Ham. We're getting in there quick. We're showing that we really want them. And one thing Sandro Tonali said today in his interview was how impressed he was with the desire from Newcastle. The likes of Dan Ashraf, Eddie Howe, who really impressed him, who really wanted him to sign for the club. It wasn't just one of their ones where, yeah, we're kind of interested. Do you fancy coming like... They really put it on the line how much they needed and wanted him to sign, and it looks like they're doing the same thing with Bond. The 25-year-old is very excited at the prospect of a move to Newcastle and is looking forward to further talks in the coming days, and everything is looking rosy, really. We're just waiting for that official bid to go into Leicester. Newcastle have probably put the feelers out there and know that a bid will be accepted or can be accepted if they maybe push up a few more million. And uh, yeah, Barnes, let's have a look at his record last season. Scored 13 Premier League goals for Leicester. 13 goals, right? Double digits from the wing in a crap, crap team. Really bad team, Leicester, last year. You know what I mean? Relegation zone for, for the majority of this season. Still bag 13 goals. Um, and selling Barnes will mean that Leicester will secure around 80 million in transfer fees with him and Madison after he joins Spurs. So that 80 million allows Leicester to get promoted, really. So they're smart with it. You know, that 80 million can be invested into six, five, six, seven players that can help you get up from the championship. Not guaranteed, of course, but it gives them a strong chance of promotion. And, uh, you know, even getting Connor Cody in was a smart move, I think. And signings like that is what you need to do. Rafa was very good at it, wasn't he? Getting signings in a Gale, Richie and stuff um, to help us get promoted. And there's no stopping Leicester getting those same type of players with the money they'll make on player sales to help them get back to the big time. Aye. Bonds to the tune is looking very likely. And I had this up, actually, I got this as well, because when I did the video the other day, I said it. I did put it out there. I said Harvey Bonds will replace St. Maxim at Newcastle. Now, will he replace Maxi? 
Will Maxi stay? I mean, it's very unlikely. Surely Barnes is going to replace somebody on the wing because we've got enough wingers, really. If you look, especially on that left-hand side, Gordon, although I think he'll be utilised as maybe a third-choice striker next year, a bit of versatility there with how he's playing for England under-21s. Um, you've got, obviously, Almirio and Murphy on the other side, but down the left, Isaac, Maxi, Gordon. You know, I feel like I'm missing someone out as well. Obviously, Joe Linton and Willick have swapped that left flank, so someone's going to go. And if you had to pick someone... I'd say it was Alan St. Maximin. And I've seen, you know, I put it out on our socials. Follow us if you don't already at the Magpie channel on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Mainly on Instagram, I would say. And I've said, you know, the thing about Bonds replacing Ma Ma uh, Alan St. Maximin. And a lot of people were in favour of it, but a lot of people weren't. It was quite split, to be fair. But, uh, you know, this one here. Maxi versus Bonds in the Premier League. Maxi's played 111 games, scored 12 goals and 18 assists. Barnes got more goals last season in one season than Alan St. Maximin has in his entire Premier League career. Let that one sink in. So Maxi last Maxi overall, 111 games, 12 goals and 18 assists. A goal contribution every 333 minutes or 3.7 games. Barnes, 146 games in the Premier League, so he's played more games, 35 goals and 25 assists. A goal contribution every 219 minutes or 2.4 games. Shout out Chris for that comment there on uh, on Instagram and you can uh, look at those stats yourself so Barnes for me I, I, I'll say it again you know, just because he's not got the fancy name people are like oh I don't know about Harvey Barnes the numbers don't lie I like Harvey Barnes he's a real hard worker good talent good finisher chips in with goals gets assists his goal contributions are there to be seen he's Premier League proven and then that's why Newcastle really like him the gamble if you like on Sandro Tonali because he's he's new to the league how long will it take him to settle you know, we've seen big Italians flop, we've seen big players small over the globe flop. Do you know what I mean? So it's not guaranteed. Barnes is guaranteed. Barnes has played in the Premier League in a struggling side and got good numbers. I don't know why people don't like the signing. I really don't. Um, but yeah, it's looking like Newcastle are going to close in on that signing of Harvey Barnes potentially next week. Incoming bid very soon for the Leicester winger. So let's move on because we've, we've went on quite a bit there about Harvey Barnes. I don't want to be here for the entire my Friday night and I'm sure you don't either. Um, but I'd like it if you did. Keep the watch up. Keep the watch time going, please. Thank you. <laughs> what else we've got to talk about, of course, is the Seller Cup. Mentioned this again the other week, a few weeks back. You know, it was leaked the Seller Cup was rumoured. It was true. The teams are true. The teams are there. Let's run through the schedule now on your screen for that weekend of festive football. The Seller Cup brought to you by Visit Malta. I think Visit Malta should appreciate that shout out and sort me out with some flights. Uh, Saturday the 5th of August, Nice v Villarreal is your first taste of football, half 12 kickoff. Newcastle United v Fiorentina, 3.30 kickoff. And then in addition, love this by the way, the women are getting involved as well. The women will be playing at St James's Park again, but for the first time since winning the league and the first time since becoming professional uh, for a 6 o'clock kickoff against West Brom women. Three matches in one day. So these tickets, I think, are £30 a day or £55 for the total package where you get, obviously, every game. So you can't just pick the Newcastle game. Now I only want to go to the Newcastle game. How much is it? Tenner? No. You have to go. You don't have to go to every game. But included in the ticket price is every single match. So there you go. And they are all e-tickets as well. So no paper tickets on this one anymore. So the club are trailing this one out. Obviously, we know next season, season tickets, everything is e-ticket. You know, scan your phone, bang, that sort of thing uh, on, on the turnstile. Testing it out, testing the waters on this weekend, the week, just one week before the Premier League season kicks off on the 12th of August with Aston Villa at home for that Hall 5 kickoff. So I have three matches in one day, and then on the Sunday it's Fiorentina versus Nice at uh, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock for that game, and then Newcastle v Villarreal at 4 o'clock. Let's just bring you up here uh, the full story from the, the club's website because they're going to how. You know, the, the the system works really. Who can win the Seller Cup? Now, that's what we want, you know what I mean? We're not messing around here. First trophy in a while. The tournament format will see teams awarded three points for a win, one point for a draw, and a, an additional point per goal scored. So that's how this could obviously very likely be decided. An additional point per goal scored. So we need to batter one of the teams, really, and uh, make sure we secure that Seller Cup. And on the website, there's no point in me reading into it, really. Uh, Darren Eels are just saying, you know, there's huge excitement. They thank the sponsors. They thank the three of Europe's top league teams coming to to the tune, you know, and, and shows the growing attraction of Newcastle United. Thanking everyone, passionate fan base, all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, like I say, thirty pound for adults for day tickets, fifty five pound for adults for the weekend, fifteen for confessions on the day, twenty five for confession concessions 
for the weekend. 25 are concessions on the weekend, not confessions. So yeah, there's, there's more info on the club's website. I'm not just going to read through it all. I don't want to boys all those details, but there you go. Good stuff. I think this is brilliant. I'm a big fan of it. I'm excited to see hopefully there's a good turnout from a mixture of fans across Europe. Get some Italians over there. Get some get some of the Spaniards and Frenchers over. And, uh, you know, get us competing against European teams again. It's a nice little warm-up for the odd team that we may face in the Champions League next season. Uh, obviously, Fiorentino are Conference League finalists. Nice and Villarreal mid-table. But, you know... Gives you a taste for it. Gets the players really warmed up. They can swap the teams again like Eddie Howe did last year. You know, we played the Friday night last year, pre-season, different side. Saturday, rotated the 11 again. So, gives us a chance to do that again. Get the fitness levels up. Get the fans inside. Get the money spent. Revenue, FFP, new signings. Lovely stuff. Good weekend. That. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of it. Inaugural Seller Cup. So, the very first one. And uh, I'm sure this will be something the club do every year now. And finally, just quickly there, the last bit of information is on Newcastle United's four-part Amazon documentary series that everybody is eagerly awaiting. Now, you would have seen them in and around St. James Park last season, getting uh, you know the fans' interactions, the clubs, inside the dressing room, behind the scenes at the training ground, everything. You will see a lot on this one. That's why people are very excited and what a season to do it. You know what I mean? The Carabao Cup final, getting top four. It's going to be amazing. I mean, they would have wished it was more than a four-part. They should have had a 14-part. That much has happened. They couldn't have expected it, could they? You know what I mean? They documented this first season, first full season since the takeover, and all this has happened, all this success. It's it's a big one. It's a mad one. Filmmakers are saying the documentary will offer a unique insight into Newcastle United's ongoing evolution under Eddie Howe. I like that. Ongoing evolution under Eddie Howe. And we'll also explore how the decisions made by the club off the pitch impact their fortunes on it. So it's not just like the um, Arsenal all or nothing, you know what I mean, where it's just the, the football inside of things. This one's really going to delve deep into Newcastle United's ownership, public investment fund of Saudi Arabia, and of course, a bit on you know the Darren Eels of the world, the Silverstones, how things work in decisions financially, sponsors, signings, all of that sort of thing. So it's going to be great to get a real good insight into that. And, uh, you know, be a fly on the wall. That's why these documentaries do so well, because you'd never normally get this kind of access. So that one is coming out in August. So we'll have to wait just a few more weeks for that one. August for the Amazon documentary. That'll do for this video, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will be back on Sunday at 5, live at 5, for the transfer talk show. I'm certain a lot of that will be focused around Harvey Barnes, maybe a bit of uh, Federico Chiesa as well, and all these other links that are coming. So make sure you tune in 5 o'clock on Sunday, live at 5. Get involved, get used a lot of going in the chat as well. It's always a good show. I've enjoyed doing it the last couple of weeks. And yeah, enjoy yourselves, everyone. Drop your comments below. Let us know what you think of this video. Give away a subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.